new stuff from ISDT. Get used to hearing that phrase because it seems like here lately in the past few weeks, I've seen so much stuff from ISDT either just released, we're announcing it now, or going to be released. And every single thing they're coming out with looks awesome. This one here is the K2. It's no different. This is an AC-DC charger. You can tell it's not tiny. So ISDT has a lot of really small chargers that are good for traveling, things like that. This one, not so much. So if you want something like that, other ISDT products probably are gonna be more up your alley. But what I love for this is it is a dual port up to 6S batteries, AC, DC charger. Whereas like the 608 AC they had, you know, the, the, the AC power supply would be removed and then you could plug in like an external power supply to get more watts into that or out of that. This one, everything is connected. So it is an AC DC charger. The AC side of it, you're gonna get 200 watts. So, you know, probably or roughly 100 watts per side. And then if you do DC, you can get up to 500 watts per side in this charger. Now, how do they do it? So you don't wanna plug in AC power plus DC power. So how do you do that without exploding? And that's with the design that they went through on the back here. So on the back, if you plug in the AC power cord, which it does come with here, if you plug in the AC power cord, you're not gonna plug in a battery or a power supply in the back of this without having to unplug the AC power cord first. So cool feature, just a simple design. One thing I do really like that they changed from like the P30, the P30, one of the complaints I had was the fact that the balance ports were on the side. So if you plug the battery into the front and you had, I don't have one laying around it, and you had like a small 4S battery or something that had that little tiny balance connector, you really had to stretch the battery around or get you know a balance board out of the charger in order to plug it in. So they fixed that on this one. Everything's right here in the front, nice and easy to access. Before we dive into the menu system, we'll go through the stats and details of this charger. And just like always, I don't memorize everything because I'm getting old and it's harder to do. So we have cheat sheets where we can go down and ramble off everything. So input voltage on the DC side, because AC side, you just plug it in, plug it into the dang wall and you got power. For DC side, you're gonna have 10 to 30 volts input and the output is one to 30 volts. Now your max input current will be 35 amps. Charging current per side will go from 0.2 to 20 amps. And then discharge, this one's a big one for me because you know when I'm storage charging and discharging batteries, if it says 0.02 amps, that's gonna be horrible and I'm gonna be there for a while. So this one is pretty much typical and your discharge current is 1.5 amps on each side, that's a maximum. And then with your discharge wattage, 15 amps. So while one and a half amps is gonna be your max current you can get, if you hit that 15 amps or 15 watts because you're discharging like a 6S battery, you're not gonna get the full one and a half amps. Now the batteries you can do with this charger, typical of just about every charger out there right now, uh, LIFE, lithium ion, LiPo, high voltage, one to six S, you got your lead acid, one to 12 S, nickel metal hydride and cadmium, cadmium, yeah, one to 16 S. And then otherwise, just like some of the other chargers that ISDT has been releasing, that are dual chargers like this, you can run them in parallel. So when you go into the main menu setting system settings, you can select parallel settings and then that allows you to kind of daisy chain these two sides together and use the whole charger instead of each individual side. If you do that, you can get 800 watts up to 35 amp discharge. Yeah, 800 watts, 35 amp output if you do the parallel. And then if you do parallel discharge, you're gonna get 30 watts, three amps. So that's a really good feature that I like of this is the fact that I could parallel this charger and then discharge or storage charge a whole lot faster, I mean twice as fast than I could do it otherwise. And we got the nitty gritty details out of the way. Let's just plug it in, go through the menu system just to walk through, see what it does, see if there's anything different, anything changed. We'll put a couple batteries on it and just do some functionality tests. Alrighty, while we're in this view, let's take a real quick closer look at the charger. So just from the screen here, actually you can see it right there in that reflection. So from the screen here, you have the buttons for each 
sides. So if you're plugged into the left side, your buttons for menu systems are here. Right side buttons are here. If you press and hold both center buttons, that's gonna take you into the menu system. Uh, right here along the front, you have two XT60s, your USB port and your balance ports, the fans on the side, the big grate on the back. This right here is where, let's try to get it here where you can see it. So your AC port is here and your DC port is here. If you're plugged into one or the other, you're not gonna plug into the other one. So let's plug in our AC power. So we're doing AC power on all of the tests and menu things that we're doing in this video. So just right off the bat, one thing that I really like about this charger is the screen. So this screen is a 2.8 inch, I believe, 2.8 inch IPS screen, checking my notes. And yes, 2.8 inch IPS. I don't know what that means other than it is a very bright, very, very good screen. Like when that was the first thing I noticed when I turned it on, I was like, dang man, I really like this. But if you click the center button on the right, it takes you to the right channel. If you click the center button on the left, it'll take you to the left channel. Click it again to take you back to see both. If you hold down both center buttons, it brings you into the menu system. So dual task, exactly how it sounds. It's where you're using both sides. You can click the center. Uh, I guess you can't click the center on that parallel task. We're not plugged on, plugged in on anything, so it's not going to let us change any settings. DC power channel one. That is where you can turn channel one into a power supply. So we're plugged into the wall. We can turn that on, or well, if you click it, it comes in. You can do output on or off. So right now, with output on, we have a 24 volt, five amp power supply by using this charger. So if we plug in another charger or you know a quadcopter or anything into channel one, you know, you're gonna be able to use that as a consistent power source. I used to use power source like that for you know test motors things like that, or you know, just use this as a power supply for a different charger, whatever you wanna do. But it's a cool feature to have. Turn that off, we'll go back. Down to system settings, lowest input voltage. We're doing AC power right now, so we can't adjust anything. Backlight, you can come in, change your backlight. Volume, high, middle, low. Let's take it down to, actually let's take it down to low for the video. Completion tone, it's gonna to repeat or single time. This is where you can activate your USB port in the front to be an actual charge port. Split screen, how it times also if we click over to only see one screen, you can actually turn this timer, I don't, I don't really know. That's, I'm confusing myself right now. But I'm pretty sure if you set this to 30 seconds, after 30 seconds, it's gonna go back to the dual screen. If you leave it off, then you have to manually tell it to go back to the split screen. Uh, back, go, channel one, channel two, language, theme. We can turn it into night mode. Or bright, actually, let's go back down to dark because it looks like you can probably see it better. Keep trickle, self-test. Running through testing everything, you can hear how loud this thing can get. Which, if you're doing like I did earlier with AC power and you're trying to storage tar storage charge, storage charge two batteries, both these fans are gonna kick on and it gets pretty loud. But that's my experience with most chargers nowadays. Uh, calibration, uh, let's, let's plug the battery in. So calibration, just like you, well, just like it sounds, you can you know, use a multimeter that you trust, check your battery, plug it in, and you can actually calibrate both sides of this charger if they are not calibrated. Uh, I haven't tested that. I haven't tested that, so I cannot attest to whether the calibration with this is good out of the factory or not, but this is where you would come in and you could calibrate each individual channel depending on what the actual voltage is of you know this this full battery so that's a feature that a lot of people really want and other than that plug them in 
and we can at least test the AC charge capability. So we've got two batteries, two 6S batteries. These are 3300 milliamp hour packs. And you can see we're both pretty much storage charged. So we're gonna come over here on the right, hold the center button to come into your task manager. Your task is gonna be charge, discharge, storage, or destroy. Destroy is exactly what it sounds like. You wanna destroy this battery. You start that, it's gonna take this battery from the charge it's at now all the way down to well, zero volts to literally destroy the battery. So we're gonna turn on charge, chemistry. Here's where you can select all of your battery chemistries. We're on LiPo. Condition, you know, 4.2, that's full charge for a typical LiPo. 6S cells. Current, 3.3, we're gonna just call it 15 amps for now to see where it would go. So let's start. Same thing here, we're just gonna start this one. Now you can hear it immediately, the fans kick on. And it gets a little, not, not really loud, but it's not really quiet either. So right here at the main screen, you can see amps at the top, LiPo 6S, what your charge voltage is and your power. So the right side right now, we're running 38 watts. The left side, we're running 167 watts. Got your temperatures here and then your voltage is so that the bottom voltage is your range between your cells and then if you click the center button it brings you here to where you can see the actual voltage per cell and then if you click the down arrow you can see your internal resistance for each cell click the down arrow again it brings you back to or not really back to but it brings you to this screen here that shows you voltage wattage all the the fun stuff center button to go back center button to click over you know, same thing so you can see our left side we're getting seven amps our right side we're getting 1.6 amps why why is it weird like that post a comment if you if you can figure out why all right so the reasoning being this is a 200 watt AC charger now that doesn't mean you're gonna get 100 watts on this side 100 watts on this side if you look, right now our left side is running 167 watts, our right side is running 38 watts. So it's roughly 205 watts, give or take, and that's total power for the charger. So while we are you know, running higher on this side than this side, it's running 200 watts total for the charger, and that's all we're going to get out of it for AC. So if we wanted to up the amperage, up the power, you turn it off, unplug AC, plug it into an external power supply that's going to get you that added juice, and then that's going to be what you need to do. To do. This thing's getting a little loud, so let's go ahead and stop it. So hold down the center button, comes up. You can change your current on the fly or just hit stop. And it takes a second to quiet back down. But that's all there is to it. And that is the ISDT K2. If there's any other questions or anything that I don't cover when we do charger videos, because if you're watching this and you've watched other ones, this is kind of a reoccurring theme. Every few weeks we're doing charger videos and that's gonna be kind of the norm, especially for you know, the amount of products ISDT is putting out. So if there's anything that I don't cover that you want to start seeing show up in these charger overview review videos, let me know. I'll make notes. I'll figure it out. If it's something that I need to learn, we're going to learn it and give you the content you want to see. You know, with that being said, I appreciate everybody watching. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button, push the bell so you can get notifications rolling in. And otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. And one note, you know, it's the holiday season. BuddyRC.com, we're going to have all kinds of deals coming out. If not this week, next week, regardless of when this video comes out. You know, check it back on the site. Tons of deals coming out on new products. Insane deals coming out on older stuff. So, you know, keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, guys, appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.